What's up, what's up, y'all? Back at it once again. It's the Coast Gear Fun Day. And um, this is on the continuation of the series, um, Africa and the Pacific Ocean. And on um, this continuation, and I'm coming out the book, The Daily Life of the Original Tasmanians. All right? I'm coming out this book, The Daily Life of the Original Tasmanians by James Bonswick. All right? A fellow at the Anthropological and the Antinautical Studies, London. This is an old book now. I come back from last. There's gonna be some racial slurs in here and some derogatory terms. It's not really me, but the reason why I'm going through this book is because it shows he, you know, he shows a lot of things that's back on back up what the series is about. You know what I'm saying? About in Africa, you know, Africa and the Pacific Ocean. Now, as you look through the chapter, you know what I'm saying? I'm right here at the origin of the Tasmanians. And you know, it says a Scotsman like a Tasmanian, the iniquity of the Tasmanian rest, paupers and offerings, the black races in Asiatic Isles, the blacks are caught in China, that's in Southeastern, you know, South Vietnam, you know, Vietnam, Thailand, places like that. Malaya, Tasmania is like an Aboriginal in India, African affinities with the people, and the black images in the temple and the churches. It goes a lot more down, like, you know, stuff like that. We're not gonna read Asia, Africa, and Tasmania once united in connection to Tasmania, New Zealand, and the black race of China Island. We're not gonna read all that, or a certain continent. We just say that for another day. But mainly what we're gonna read is from the problem from islands to the images of the temples and the churches. All right, we're gonna start right here. The Poppins, right? The Papua New Guinea, which name in Mayan means popo popo or papa or curly or frizzy, are known by some as Oriental Negroes. M.D. Basra Bashir in his voyage to Munkalus, to Munkalus, asserts that through the islands to the north are a mixed people of Serenese, Javanese, and Papans, with their original and exclusive Aborigines there. Mr. Cobb described the Papas of New Guinea as small in stature with black crisp hair high but narrow foreheads, eyes dark, dark eyes, flat, broad nose, large mouths, big lips, and good teeth. There have been writers earnestly classes when as a cross between the Malaysian and the African. Negro. Mr. Pickney draws a distinction between the Negritos and apartments saying that the former are diminutive and are aggravated with Negro features. He answers the armadillos, the armadillos, as the Negritos. Who Dr. Mike, the authority mentions the Amarinians being, although small, perfect, and stacked with feature, with figure, with fine foreheads, are wholly un negro like. Mr. Earl, one of our ablest writers upon the Indian Apocalypse, uses this language that the Poppins is the most ancient of the races inhabiting the Indian Apocalypse, right? Cannot, I think, be doubted. It is extremely probable they occupied originally all the islands of the Archipelago, large and small. They have at length been found in interior Bono near the source of the Koto River on the west coast. They appeared originally genuine, hypothetical, and therefore dwellers on the coast. MLF Alfred Murray in his Letterity de Holmes draws a fine distinction between the two. The offerings consist, consisted of a race in the meeting between the Pawkins and the Malays. They ought to be considered as an issue of crossbreeding these two stocks. They inhabit Bono. Celebs were there called Tero, the Mullahs, and the Mandingo, and several other islands. They are brave, intelligent, and very superior in connection with moral qualities to the Poppins. He probably observed that the uses upon scarification on different parts of the bodies distinguish the Poppin race. As to the Poppins, in the work of Michel Leon and Granite, we have this account. The color of the skin is black, mixed with one eighth part yellow, which imparts a clear tint of the various intensity. The hair is black, thick, marley wooded. They wear frizzle out in a remarkable manner and let it fall upon their necks in long twisted masses. Those are dreadlocks. The twisted masses, these talking about long, how they let it fall upon their neck in long twisted masses, those are dreadlocks. Nose is somewhat flattened, chin small and well formed. Their cheekbones are prominent, their foreheads elevated, their eyebrows thick and long, their beards are thin. Captain Frigent, commander of the French expedition in 1817 to 1820, the ship Uranus and Fazine 
believes the New Islanders, New Hollanders, are to be Poppins and identify the Mountaineers of the Vegan as our friends. The heads of the Poppins, he said, present a deep a depression of the anterior and posterior parts at the same as an enlargement of the face. The summit of the head is raised and partially bossed and preeminent. The temples are convex and the crown below a semicircular line on the upper sides of the heads offer a remarkable projection. The bones of the nose, almost vertical, depressed before the inlet behind, have little projection and limit in their middle part and in a large upward and downward. Mr. Watts has given much attention to the subject. He says the Malays, or the, says the Malays and Papa, if these two great races were direct modification one of the other, we should expect to find an intertwining region of some homogeneous indigenous race presented to intermediate capture characters. In the Maya archipelago, we have an example, an excellent example of two absolutely distinct races. While Mr. Huxley thinks the Poppins ally more with the Negro than any other race, Mr. Wallace sees difficulties in accepting it as probable or possible. Elsewhere, the letter finds intermediate in the so-called Alfredo Zogito, whom he writes, the stature and their features, as well as their disposition and habits, are almost the same as the Poppins. Their hair is semi-popping, either straight, smooth, and glossy like true Malays, nor so frizzled or woolly as a perfect Poppin type. But always crisp and wavy and rough as such occurs among true Poppins, never among Malayans. Their color alone is exactly that of Malayas or even Lyre. His conclusion I thus express, I believe the numerous intermediate form among the countless islands of the Pacific are not merely a mixture of, the, of these races, Maya and Poppin, but are to some truly extended intermediate or transition of that the brown and the black, the Papa and the native Galeno and the Sirming, the Fijian, and the habits of the Sandwich Islands and those of the New Zealand are a various form of one great oceanic or Polynesian race. Their capacity of their skulls, while it's finding them so nearly identical with some of the Mayan groups to offer no clear point of difference. Wantrafruz, the great unity advocate, placed them as hybrids between true Negroes and a Malaysian or yellow race. Mr. Langton will not believe that the Afrontas will be black and declare, I believe in the whole doctrine of resisting anything deserving the name of Negro or Negrito to the west of New Guinea is destined to die out. At the logical chart of the Nova expedition, the Poppins are all over Australia and Tasmania and over New Guinea, a set in this eastern province, and a little in the southwest coast. In broad spinning plates, the Poppin heads are long and broad and partial, and narrow and at the frontal. Florian described those at Santa Cruz as black as Negroes of Africa. All have woolly hair. So if we identify the Poppin types in the Solomon Isles, they have woolly hair and black and thick and flat noses. Maris finds the same thing in Atatis Island saying, they have woolly hair, the skin of bit men black, and all traits of Negroes of Africa. Mr. Lizin and Gana has fully expressed their views in the Anno de Science Naturel of 1826. They described the Poppins, including the Tasmanians, New Herbicide, and New Cardians in these terms. Their hair is black and very thick, moderately wooded. Their nose a little depressed and nostrils transverse large. The chin is little and made well. The cheekbones are projecting. The forehead is high. The lips are thick and long. The beard is rare. They speak of their color as deep black. Their hair as short, woolly, and very curly. Their facial anger and moderately acute. They connect the popping family with the use of the red mixture for hair and cut a rest on their body, roasting for food, and lying on the ground by fires. Though placing the Australian distinct from the poppins, all these are signs are laterally applied to the strictly to the former. But they found Cataris and Company in Madagascar. They said the Poppins had the greatest resemblance to the Cafo Macasas. Of these, they declared there are some of the traits that would do suffer in great part to trace the portrait of the Poppin of Dory of New Ireland. Mr. Pritchard will also distinguish the Poppins by practice of Cataris, that's the cutting of the body. Not able to recognize the French voyage distinctions, he divided the poppins into two races. Some use the word Kelikanesians as indication of fresh hair race, the Melanesians as a wild man of group of Negroes who from the Solomon Islands, New Britain, and New Ireland. Patron, 60 years ago, showed the points of the difference between the Tasmanian and their New Islands, Black, New Holland, Black friends. 
Although with better knowledge of both, he would greatly modify his views and recognize in their customs, uses, and arts enough to characterize both of them as from one common heritage. But there is in this a freshness in this story. He speaks of the absolute distance of difference of the races which each people have in these shores. In fact, we expect the thinness of the numbers and we observe equally with these two people have nothing in common, either in their customs, their uses, their arts, nor their instruments of chastity for fishing, their huts, their canoes, their arms, neither in language nor in physical condition altogether. The form and its close proportions of the face. This is absolute assemblance and represent the color. The natives of the Isle of Demon are much darker than those in New Holland. It is exhibited in the character which everyone agrees in regards to the most important or which distinguish the various races of the human species. I meant to speak of the nature of the hair and the habits of the lemon, have a short, woolly, and crisp. Those in New Holland have long, straight, long, and stiff. How to conceive that island of 60 leagues in which is not more found in the thrust of the confines of the Eastern Hemisphere. I separated from one another by land that this is a five, eight, 12, even 1,500 leagues, we can have a race of man absolutely different from which the vast continent is so near. How to conceive the exclusion of all relations so contrary to our ideas upon communications of other people and their transmigrations? How to explain that deeper color, this crisp and woolly hair in a country much colder? All these anomalies are singular and are proof of our imperfection of our theories. The French nationalist accounts for the difference of geological grounds. Thus, the separation of the land of the land of Demiman from that of New Holland is an anterior epioch event in two countries. One can have little doubt, in fact, that if the time they have been joined, their habits would belong to a common race, and more likely those ferocious tribes than that occupy all of New Holland now. The Tasmanian appear isolated, and therefore, even in Australians, with whom we share the common rights, habits, beliefs, and sympathies, his hair principally distinguishes him from the New Hollander. We wonder not that Shabiki was able to unable to identify him with others on the continent. National professor, professor Huxley classified him with the Negro. All right, the Tasmanians. He described a region through herbicide to New Caledonia, which is entirely peopled by the Negro type, except for some imported by the Polynesian immigration. There was a great gap between the Fuji Islands and Tasmania. And the last point you will meet with the Negro type is in Tasmania, where the people are totally different from the Australians and exhibit all marks and characteristics of the Negroids. Yet Dr. Pickering saw the Australian having a complex and features of the Negro with fear in a place of wool. Picture placed the Tasmanians separately from the Australians, saying that they are decidedly of the Parapolesian Negro stock. Compressed, elongated farm, with punctuous jaws, he may recognize the skull. He shows the fellow popping in a Viti Islands has similar cranium and ample size of quarter ridge with the head sloped down on each side to give other the convexity of the partial bones and the narrowness of the lateral compression of the forehead. Some further notice that of these dark races were still alive to the Tasmanian may elucidate the subject. They are found scattered all over a vast area, not only in the Southern Sea, the Indian Ocean, North and South Pacific, but on the mainland of Asia and everywhere, more or less, a savage, unprogressive people. We have testimony Mr. Logan that these Tibetan Indian tribes and the Indian archipelago would have been most eluded from the colonial, the continual influx of ultra India and Indian influence, in which the African elements are the strongest and had the nearest affinity to the Polynesians. The New Guinea furnished our many tribes of these particular Aborigines, to whom they rest as have already been made. Mr. Madonna found a tree full of them like monkeys. Bruno said Mr. Arizi is the cradle of the black race of Oceania. We know but little the interior of the vast island. The Dakas, a light and more civilized race living on the coast, are terrible enemies of their ruder and darker neighbors of the interior to whom they apply the epithets to their express their contempt and dislike, and whom they treat as wild beasts when captured. Mr. Doden has noticed that some of these wild men, further to the north, are to be found men living in an absolute state of nature, so-called, who neither cultivate the ground nor lives in tents, who neither eat rice or salt and do not associate with each other, but rove about the woods like some wild beasts. They were, in short, a savage, as it says, the tree climber seen by the Dutch in New Guinea. 
Earl, Mr. Earl, had a remarkable kind of some tumulae containing earthen drawers found in Borno West. So they find them, you know, they find their tombs and stuff up in there. The Jackers shared these memorials of the past so highly as they refused 500 pounds for one jar, saying it belonged to their deceased ancestors. Sumatra, it is seen by some, the cradle Malaysian race, still possess some tribes of blacks, the true aborigines. The Gugus are one race there. Mr. Marner has much information on those tribes in the hills and forests. In Java, no remains of black people are found. A numerous and civilized people of Buddhist faith have doubtlessly excavated the others. All right? So they're saying, according to him, he's saying the Buddhists came down and knocked them off. In the Malas, the original, aboriginal, crispy hair Hafas or Horfas, the Lincoln's occurs the office of the aboriginal of the Moluccas. In the Tabriz, there are wild tribes called Bunjas, like the Kanas and East Borno. The Tamerian, says Mr. Logan, may be clearly, may be nearly as distinct anthologically from the Mongols as the British Islanders are. Some in Flores, also in Borno, have curly hair. Stone axes of the aborigines have been found discovered in Java, though the people are lost. Woolly hair poppins are still living in the island east of Java. Mr. Mueller denies any black dark blood in Tamir, as Mr. Layton does in any of the Mookas. Tamir has been a living people, Tamir has a living people, a people living in the forest who are described as cannibal and hunted as wild beasts by the more other band's inhabitants. The Amarillas are a small, black, and barbarous people, wholly separated from the others and surrounded by nations that inherit civilization, distinguished for refinement. Mr. Earl said these are very closely corresponding with the Tasmanian and their habits and appearance. On Nicobar the Great Isle, a tribe has been spoken of, well in the privacy of the dense forest, subsisted upon snakes, roots, and berries, who are black savages having crisp, curly hair. In the Philippine Islands, especially on the zone, the Etas, or the untenable progenitors, Negroes, as they are called, have been observed in a number of 30, nearly 30,000. On a neighbor in Mandingo, they live peacefully with the brown megarines who are equally themselves, who equally with themselves are persecuted by the Mohammedan radical, piratical minds. So here it is again, this is a sidebar. Here it is again, Islam and the slave trade in the Pacific. All right? I got books on that. We're gonna talk about that later, later in a series and stuff like that. But yes, Islam did some damage to black people all worldwide. As you're seeing right here, I'm gonna read it one more time. On the name of man, did they live peacefully with the brown mega rings who are equally themselves persecuted by the Mohammedan heretical Malays? On Sulu, they have been partially civilized. The Etas or the Anu wander naked over the mountains and have true frizzy hair. The Abi Bernardino de la Fuentes had noticed these Etas or Etas and may be correctly enough applying them to the uncivilized Tasmanian. They said, they said the, the race of the Negroes says he sees the bears upon them on the maledation of heaven, where they live in the woods and the mountains like beasts in separate families, wanting to support themselves by fruits which the earth spontaneous offered them. It has not come to my knowledge that a family of true Negroes ever took up a bow in their village. If the Mohammedans inhabitants may slay them, here go the part right here, if the Mohammedans inhabitants make slaves of them, they rather submit to be beaten to death or undergo anybody than undergo anybody fatigue. And it's impossible by force or persuasion to bring them to labor. I could never reclaim any of them. <laughs> I believe very few niggas, Negroes, have converted. I have ever maintained with these Negroes are gentle and friendly in the course, hoping that the grace of the Lord might rectify their hearts. Worthy old priest, would you and all your Eskimo brethren of Christian faith have shown such a feeling for the dark skins of the East? So now they're trying to promote Christianity among them during this time. It's like, you know, like I said, this old book. Japan itself is not a remnant of ancient people. The wild men in the northern Nippon were conquered by the Meisto dynasty. Japanese authors described them as having stone souls like our black fellows and being related to the hairy men of Jesso or an animal race there in the southern isles, southern Curling Isles. Concerning the animal, the Japanese have a story of a woman dwelling by herself on a certain island who was visited by a dog, and thus gave birth to ancestors of wild men. On the island of Formosa, where it's Taiwan called today, similar archer tones or men in a song are known with frizzy hair. 
Remarkable account is given to the most popular race on the Papua, one of the Carolina Islands in North Pacific. There are voyages that found huge, rough walls of stone masonry, remains and fortification of a civilized and distinct people. A few aborigines there, and have thus described by Captain Luce. The Pepper have large, flat, large and flat faces, broad, depressed nose, thick lips, large eyes, large flashing eyes, expression defines and curiosity. The skin color, the color of the skin is turbulent in the man is a shade between chestnut and olive. Their dress consists of short apron made of grass, barks, and dry leaf of banana, which is attached to the belt hanging around their thigh. This is presumed by the touring and proper. On the island of Van of Vanacoro, where the expedition of Captain Dio Euro found relics of Lee Perez's shipwreck there in 1789, a black race are mentioned and grievously affected by elephantitis having lateral pressures of the temple and Arjun Prudence in the middle of the forehead. The Euro said of them, their hair is crisp, although they're not cut. It never becomes bushy and massive. They are nearly naked. Here, the Tasmanian head and not the Fijian. The worthy French voyager La Proust had made an accurate observation upon the black race in the islands, which we already described, saying, I am convinced that the race of woolly-haired men still find the interior of the islands of Luan and Formosa or the aborigines of the Philippine Islands, Formosa, New Guinea, New Britain, and New Herbicide, Friendly Islands, and the Southern Hemisphere, and of the Carolina, Ladones, the Southern, and Sandwich in the North. These two very distinct races appear strikingly in our eyes at the Navigator Isles. The New Gondonians, now under the protection of the French, have no more been tamed by them, and over our eyes of Tasmania ourselves have been described in some sources of the Vidalian Island natives. But there are several manifestations of progress among them. The results probably in the context of the superior brown race of Polynesian. That is distinguished from them from the other Aborigines. But the physical difference is quite spite of the woolly hair marked not being a, poor ra a pure race. Albert Berry in 1792 was the first to recognize this similarity. Their hair is woolly, he tell us, and their parts are middle size and their complexion is black as the natives of Van D land of Van D land. And a general type of the consonants is similar to that of the people last mentioned. M. Dami Rizni and his Occitane of 1835 referred to a heathen people, speaks of them being by origin, but a variety of the race of those of Manila popping by origin. The last variety of the race was as those of Manila in New Caldea, and perhaps a variety resulting from the mixture of populations with Australia as they manufacture a cloth made of pottery, play instruments of music, indulge, although very little in agriculture, and appear as orders and worshipers of their ancestors. They have stepped a long way ahead of other properties. See, the ancestors of worship still going back, so that's a very important feature right there that's not really talked about. The best authority in the whole is Dr. Victor D. Rogers, who little work upon New Caldea contains a much sensible matter. He decided the people are a mixed race. It would be as a furthest thing, in my opinion, to wish to resolve a question of the origin of New Caldeans by the sole analogy of the customs, beliefs, and institutions. He added further, the question ought to be sought specifically, principally, in the imperial anthropological characters in the language. Alfred Jacobs, another French writer, has no flattering account to give. Their physiology, he writes, is brutal and gross. The women, above all, with their woolly hair and their stupid kindness their hanging breasts and their foreign maternities resemble more beasts than human beings. The men are entirely naked, except in the envelope of the sexual parts and the shirt of the cloth. As to the females, they cover their middle bodies with a girdle a foot in size, which is attached to them a garment which descends from the shoulder to the calf of the leg. There is, in fact, in New County, a mixture object of Aborigines of Australia and the fine Polynesian races. Having traced the Aborigines through the islands, let us review the question of their appearance on the main continent of Asia. Always bearing in mind that the effect of the partial contact with other and more civilized races, which has influenced their physique as well as their customs. Their portions to the means and preserving their identity is what we do with the distinctiveness of the Aboriginal people. Ultra India, especially Konkan China, affords the home of these wild men. In early 1778, Mr. Chapton described the Moria as black and resembled Kaffirs in features. 
Kaffir is another, you know, old school word for nigga. They are recognized by various names according to the place as the Kardons, Malons, Ben Shivers, Kanaka Karens, and the Karda or the Karda with a short race with thick lips and deep black skin. Being very unyellow like the Chanchen, like the Chanchen Chinese. So there's two different races of people in, in, in Southeast Asia. They are the Banas, Sanas, Hanans, Rainos, Themes, Garnings, and between Anam, Laos, and Cambodia, who are more advanced and some work with iron. Most employ circumcisions, though without any notice of the future state. The Nadis are spoken of very degraded. The Motors or the outcasts are small in stature. Conservative and able to sustain great fatigue in a while in analysts, but says Captain Farron, gentle to their wives and their children, and faithful to their congenial work. In this respect, they are morally superior to their civilized neighbors. Professor Huxley was much more interested in the, in the photographs of these people brought home by Captain Farron and announced a striking resemblance to exist between the race and the Australians. The more had to be westward. The so called Red Karens are in high amounts in the northeast of Purdue at the latitude of 24 south. Their lighter color may be affected with great elevation. The kind or the children of the mountain are to the west of the Agony and between Abad and Arakan. The barbarous Nagas are in the Woolies Hills of Assam. The Pona and are the forest northeast of Perlu at 90 degrees, 22, 19 degrees and 22. The Kalin, a wild race, live in the hilly territory of Sarum where they the lead streams leads to Chinese territory. The neck of sentence lies between Kazakhstan, China, and Cambodia, are men of heights. They are found as far as 103 East in Laos. Unlikely, unlike the smooth yellow race of the land, they have been well bearded and thick eyebrows and fine foreheads. According to the French naturalist, M. Mayat, who, who perished in the swamps of Cambodia, the Steins, through the savages, are a noble looking people, and through without, without peace or temples, possess more virtue than any of Latin Amanese or Samanese. The Chinese is not a homogeneous nation, being various of very opposite races. By common consent, they are esteemed to be the most ancient people now living under civilized condition, being allowed to be a nation with a settled government for 4,000 years. Baron referred to their language saying, the Chinese may call the mountain of Andrew Vito's speech. The Southern people around Canton were annexed in comparatively modern days, okay? So there's a big difference between the South China and North China. The Southern people around Canton was annexed in comparatively modern days. But most of the ancient annals and records of existence of other and uncivilized tribes were willing to compare an inaccessible place to the westward. Born by the general name of most frequently, Mizitsu, children of the soil, they are known by several applications of Safon, Lolos, etc. Though 82 tribes have been registered. So 82 black tribes have been registered in China. In the history of the, measure, the history of the dynasty of the Ming, there's a description of the country of Tess Plains containing eight passions. Some men dwell in caverns and hollows. They live on fruit and fish and crab. They have neither house, hut, wells, or fireplaces. They have no religion. They are like the wild men of Japan called the Samayama, having black, crisp hair. These are found in the islands of Hanan, as well as the hills of Nekaling and Megaling of South China, said Mr. Lockhart. Women have far more liberty with them than the civilized Chinese, all right? So there's 28 registered, just to get back in the high side, there's 28 registered tribes back then, excuse me, 82 registered tribes have been registered. So 82 black registered tribes have been registered in China. All right, or black registered tribes. I don't know what happened to them. We got to read the books and see what happened to them. But I think we can pretty much figure out their end results. The Malaysia Peninsula, the most rugged and impractical country in Southern Asia, has always put the preserve and perhaps a large number of wild tribes than there are to be found anywhere else. In spite of the energy and the cruelty of the Malays, who have settled in the harbors of this coast, and who have a small extent had you made use of some of the Aborigines, that mean they made them slaves. All right. It still goes on today, by the way. You know what I'm saying? And the Malays. The Junkers of the Malays resemble the Bata of Sumatra and the Simians of Kadesh. The Reverend P. Fire and Amak has written of them. They hear, although black and frizzled, is not the crispiness of the Kafir. The second means are the Ranga Benga, men of the soul, true ashtones, were seldom seen by the civilized. 
The eyes are deeply set and their nose sink at the root. Peter Brand speaks of the orangutan, of the orangutan young man of the forest, or the rank of Buta Kit, the man of the mountains. They eat anything, have frizzed hair, and yield a small smell, and tell the truth. A writer expressed the wild feeling of the Malines in these words. Where the Menti trees join their lofty branches, and where the Cooper links their roots, we let us adjourn. We wish to repose with our head pillows of knotted, tree, knotted trunk of the Duran tree, and curtain with the Asinal leaves. Similarly, with the cement, with the term remains in the Australian speak of those who were summoned from their independence to the groves to labor their dependence in the city. Mr. Cameron, in his pleasing work in Malaya, thus pictured the Aborigines there. They are seemingly short in stature, men seldom over five feet in height. Their bodies and knee limbs are neatly molded, but their form appears to be a little too heavy for the latter. Their heads are small, their foreheads slightly rearing, and their mouth is large, and their lips is thick and hanging almost entirely devoid of the nerve. The nose is low in the face and show no signs of a bridge. Their eyes are small but well set and have not sunk an honest look. Their hair is generally woolly. In several of these statements, we recognize the Tasmanian. Mr. J.R. Logan says that Amamin and Amamin are present remnants of a pre-Hamlinic pre colony and primarily similar to the Dravidian Australian tribes occupied it as far as have been having it before the Manan race entered the region. But it's in India where we perceive our most significant illustrations of existence of a primitive race. There too, they have found a surrounding influence of a dominant, superior, and numerous people, who with their four or 5,000 year contact displayed an advanced civilization and a development for the rapid literacy system and have been able to alter the simple habits of Aborigine, nor craft their faith upon a barren stock. Like as in ultra India, Malays, Luzan, and Sumatra, they are hidden in jungles and lost among the heights. They are scattered in their retreats among the Hindus, like many elements in the ocean. At one time, it had been a thought as an assert to look for a Tasmanian and Australian kindred in India, as it is learned for the learned author of the Hindu Patreon, to expect to find it in Australia. Traces and remains of the Sanskrit and temple and images of very Hudistism, facing indeed the existence there in no very distant period of a magnificent Hindu empire. The deacon, the chief home of the dark aboriginals, is geologically cut off from the rest of India. Its piles of basalt and deep ravines and rich earth stations have nurtured a dense convert cultivation and furnishing a hiding place for the men of the soil. It is there, said Mr. Huxley, tell us that we may meet a people who, by definition, undistinguishably from the Australian races. It is impossible when contrasted with those barbarians of the hills who are cultivated Hindu of the Ganges Valley. And to believe with Mr. Crawford that the both the mountaineers and the inhabitants of the open plain in the valley are like natives of the soil and of the same race. But it's certainly unlike that Dr. Meyer, who may be correct in dividing the aborigines of India in two great classes, almost as far as the pole of sunder. The non Aryan people who are connected with British history as some of the foreign the most faithful troops in the intrepid line. Since the rival Brahmanism had been cut off as an unclean caste, but it's under the mild sway of an older Buddhism that had made some advantage in civilization. Sir Walter Elliott informed us that the ancient Sanskrit writers omit traces of a pre existing literature. All right? So you can't kick that, that stuff on there. It's a pre existing literature already that before that, written by black people in India. Mr. Justice Campbell rounds them up in the hilly districts in the vast west and north south pillars of Bengal, of Bengal, Burn, and Penning and the frontiers of Hyperbelladai in the Madras territories and the eastern Ghats in the inland civilized portions of the Nepal territory. Mr. G. Campbell divides them into chlorine and of the northern and the southern, northern and Dravidian or the south. Let me read that again. Mr. G. Campbell divides them into chlorine or northern and Dravidian or southern. He places Bill's coals and sun with the former and God's honor with the latter. Mr. Buchanan thinks the physical types of all tumulings tends to oneness. This is too extensive a subject to be otherwise than most briefly noticed in the chapter. Mr. Brick, General Briggs gave a list of 28 Aboriginal tribes, nations in India. So that's 28 original black nations in India. He asserts that there are incontestable proof that the Aboriginal race had once occupied every part of India. Some of the locales of these aberrations may be given. The Dingies in the northwest of Bengal, the Tuzan 
the coals in the district of Bernays and Colon, the Malays and Mapar, the domes in Dumapur, the bills in Berwan, and the Nirwana Mayata, the mans in the Medis, the Murs and Mara, and the Gons and Gonwa. There is no caste society, and widows marry, marry. They eat flesh and live a particular life, and the Hindus are forbidden to have their creed teach to them. Most of them lead the life of a savage still. Even those who are somewhat progressive, keeping their herds and attiring themselves in a fashion, have other blood mingled with that of the forest fathers, of their four forest forefathers. The Malaya of the Nurbar was once more numerous than now appear. They had been a tyrant and quite firm farmers of the plain. But of these, Colonel Todd declares, there's an improvement of a tribe with tails and are not more civilized than, than their maximum. The Coles or Coles are a widespread family in the hills, both sexes being regardless of color, like wild bunnies of Ceylon. The Sandals are a spread nose of the bills and once at war with us are a sub or original people. And that's where the giants who live in the munchkin in the trees and the bank of Burma poor. The black dongs or the Karma have crisp hair. The Kali of the Girzai and the general of the Brukenstein are black and ugly. Mm. Of the Brukenstein are black and ugly. The variants of the sea lion are counted as bruised by the sea lion, although not clean, they are truthful. Who would oppose that Captain Grandma Graham's account of the Niles in the northeast province of Canada could refer to a person living in India? The land of this economy and refinement when the Greeks ate corn and Abraham the and Terma. They existed, right, Captain Graham, perfectly among the wild among the mountains, subsisting chiefly on roots and fruits and berries. They had no intercourse with others and dwell in their unrestrained freedom and the hardships of other savage existences. Marriage contracts, as well as other religious ceremonies, were utterly dispensed with, and the sort of the pair of free live together as long as they choose and separate the pleasure and convenience. Infants accompanied her mother and next to her abode, but the grown-up children remained with their father. Nine towns are dark and dwindled in stature, and their features are certainly ill favored Thus, they are associated strikingly with the amateurs of the Bay of Bingo and the Tasmanians so many thousand miles away. The prelates or the wild men in the woods and the very hills have no huts and wander perpetually. Their mothers carry their children on their hip throughout the bush and find inside of the Hindu. Surrounded by the people, the Hindus are more fastidious than any other mode of eating and food of character. These wild men like to see out of the plateau of central India will eat anything but cats and dogs. The Javinian or the original Tamil people of the southern India are, in their speech, singularly allied to the Finns. Hmm. The Gadon or the Indian Gora Hills had the same physique, uses, and habits, and often dialects as the ancient Burmese of Malaya. It is such a people that Mr. G. Campbell experienced and used in the firm that these tribes are rather are rather allied to the southern blacks than the northern Mongolia. All right. So he's saying in their ways and that they're more allied to the southern blacks than the northern Mongolians. He added, many more, many of the tribes are in a lower stage of barbarism. Mm. The whole of them can still muster two or three million in India. Their customs are born to set their noses, leaving their villages upon death occurring, doubling up the body and ritual, identify them with the southern races. The horse, we are told, was unknown to them. One who knew them well marks one great difference between them and the Hindus and their hair, which he recalls very abundant and tangling, and shocked the headed appearance, and sometimes curly or even woolly. Colonel Dalton has written, the orang has a more of an African type of the features, and I have seen amongst them woolly hairs. The Shemmes of Malabar are often seen woolly, and they present the Tasmanian rather than the Australian characteristics. There are traditions in southern India of other people having woolly hair. The old manuscript account of the Hindu settlement says, Ancient men were toughly here to dwell in this town. It's remarkable, too, that the so-called Negro range will be greater on the Asian of the Asian than the African side of the Indian Ocean. Hmm. It's remarkable, too, that the so-called Negro range should be greater on the Asian side, on the Asian than the African Ocean. Hmm. Let me read that one more time. It's remarkable, too, that the so-called Negro range should be greater on the Asian than the African side of the Indian Ocean. In closing, the remarks upon these black people, the words of Mr. G.E. Roberts come with such appropriateness. 
the hill tribes of India, the Viking of Ceylon, and various men of the soil who live in the mountains fastness of the mainland peninsula are so many stagnant patches of human, patches of human life, hunting together in the midst of active races, holding fast by their few degraded traditions. Their connection with the Southern people has been unpleasantly put by M. Alfred Murray. He says, we can recognize that the rest of these Australian Negroes and the very savage tribes of Hindustan with black skins are have all the same ugliness of an ape. But the most hideous of these Indo-Australian populations inhabit the Paramount, Samar, and the sources of the Nibiru. He adds further, one finds elsewhere upon the coastal Mozambique Negroes who we call the Oceanic Blacks. This is no funny picture of the Tasmanians. The African connection to our Tasmanians have been maintained by Professor Huxley, who thinks of them in even relation with Egyptians. Now, I got a, I got a piece on that. You know what I'm saying? It's a deep piece. And I'm a, it's not written by Professor Huxley, but it's backing up his point. We're going to get into that some later videos. Professor Paul Prokem has objected to this classification and object that the most perfect, imperfect race of the South was the great builders of the now. No one can however fail. No one, however, can fail to discover the monuments of Egypt places are so light the new Islanders and Demonese as warned to Mr. Huxley and others expressing opinion of old identity. Let me read this one more time. No one, however, can fail to discover on the monuments of Egypt faces so like the New Islanders and Dimes, who are the warm Mr. Huxley and other expressing opinion of old identity. But Ptolemy, in his old map, in his map of the country east of the Caucasus of Malaya, was a country of Negro fish eaters, enjoying Asia to Africa in the 15 S south latitude, as a source of the Nile. The Hontans, who have made so many points in common with the Tasmanians in their custom as well as physique, that part of the argument of a naturalist cannot, one cannot but seem an alliance. Burnley's in a strong resemblance as well as a mental and physical disease or was the lowest popping race and the intelligence of the, the humanity skill in general bear to the Hottons. Barrow, the South African traveler, identified the Hottons with the ancient Egyptians. The people, let me say it again. Barrow, right, the South African traveler, identified the Hottons with the ancient Egyptians. Mozambique people are a popping light with characterized body. The link between India and Africa is furnished by some tribes westward of the Indian Ocean. A remarkable race of Adams or slaves became known as the Europeans in 1850. They were living in South Arabia where they were held by the Arabs as unclean and uncivilized. Here go Islam again, all right? We all know South Arabia was a black spot. Yemen is still a black spot today. That's when they're knocking it off. Their colors and customs assimilated with those who are literal Abyssinians with whom they are doubtlessly one people before the dreadful flood took place. Still perpetuated in, in the name of the Bible Straits or the Gates of Tears, which divide the family. There are evidence that the remains of the old Kushite are hammering stock. The Kushites who once spread from even the Mediterranean to India were Ethiopians. All right? We're talking about the, we you know, cut it back down to you know what I'm saying? Back to the fat again. Ethiopians. Like, you know, just under under hitchitosis. Mr. Pilot Gray went in Arabia, found a leap between the Arab and Abyssinian and the Catholic tribes. He considered the Hamites of the Hamarites of African origin. The Chaldeans were undoubtedly Hamatic, the early archaic common to Asia and Africa. Mr. Logan was of the opinion of the Indo African preceded the later East Asian, which developed in the Malayan and Palaisian tribes. He got the whole western margin of the Indiana Ocean Basin from the Red Sea to Kafirland, gave us words and customs to the eastern islands. In fact, so strongly was he impressed by this idea as to declare, we must go to Australia or Papa Isa to understand the character of the Indo African era of the archipelago. Madagascar presents another inquiry to the field. Besides floral evidence and antimony indicates the evidence of a race belonging to the old Papan type undoubtedly left unstranded on the island when the old southern continent was submerged. All right, we can go on and on and on about that, you know, but it's going to go into a little bit more different. But it shows the African types, and we're going to do a little bit more about that, about how the Egyptian culture, the black, the sub-Arabian, the sub-Arabian, the sub-African Egyptian culture, as they saw out here in this book. I just showed it right here. I'll read it again for you. You know, the, they are indefinitely the remains of the old Kushite hemorrhagic stocks. 
the Kushite who once spread even from the Mediterranean to the Indian to India were Ethiopians. Mr. Palgrave went in Arabia, found a link between the Arab and the Abyssinians in the Kanta tribe. He regarded the Amorites as of African origin. The Chaldeans were undoubtedly Hamanic, the early archaic of the common to Asia and Africa. Mr. Logan was of the opinion that the Indo-African preceded the later East Indian and East Asian, which developed to the Malaysian and Palaysian tribes. He thought the whole western margin of the Indian Ocean Basin from the Red Sea to Kaffirland gave words to the customs of the Eastern Islands. So, also, I hope y'all paying attention to this, how this about how Islam and the slave trade, they just gave little bits and pieces. We're going to go a little bit more in depth in that. Uh, Islam played in the Pacific slave trade of our black people over there. You know what I'm saying? Islam was a beast on the east. Islam was a beast in the west. You know, I'm going to provide, provide facts for that. But this is how it is. So most of Asia was definitely black. And they floated boats. All right? That's another thing where all these people, these aboriginal movements getting messed up. And, you know, you know our people floated boats to get there and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like Burrow said, the South African traveler identified the Hattons with the ancient Egyptians. We ought to notice that, you know, the culture, the cultural affinities. You know what I'm trying to say? Even Ptolemy got in the mix. Ptolemy and his max in the country to the east. And now we got to look at that map too. Many people don't sleep on that map Ptolemy had. Ptolemy had a map of the world. He knew the world was goddamn round. He learned that from the Egyptians, from the black people. He knew that shit. You know what I'm saying? But y'all sparing with y'all next, y'all, y'all ignorance and stuff. You know, but this is black Asian. This is kind of a good one for black Asian, you know, breaking it down. African connection by Tasmania has been maintained by Professor Husley, whoever think of them in relations of the Egyptians. And that'll probably be the next video I do on the subject for um Africa and, and um, Pacific Ocean. No one, however, can fail to discover on the monuments of Egypt faces so like the New Hollanders and the Dameans. As the one that Mr. Huxley and other express an opinion of an old identity. So they know that's black. They know it's black African. They name it out of these tribes. Many people didn't know it was about 86 black tribes in China. That's registered back then. 28 in India. You know what I'm saying? Black registered tribes. We're going to find out what happened to these people. I'm pretty sure they got kicked to sleep. We got to find out what happened to some of them. I'm pretty sure some might be around them. But we're going to find all this stuff, you know, more and more and more. Y'all keep traveling with me on this history lesson. This is um, Africa and the Pacific Ocean. Coast Get Funny, subscribe to the channel, and this is what we do. Peace.